Hello together. In the last video we did an introduction into the NIF Connect SDK and save here. We uh, compile the Blinky example and transfer it to our NIF 52840 developer kit. Today we want to go a little bit into the programming uh, and program our own Blink example. And the question is how we are starting. We are using the Blinky example as a starting point. So we're going in the NIF SDK folder, uh, my project, where we store the Blinky example. I'm just making a copy of the Blinky example. Uh, the folder structure for the project are always similar. So I rename it my Blink example. And one thing what we should do is delete the build folder. It's the easiest way we can make this also later in Little Studio Code to change it or uh, delete it, but I make it directly because the build folder um, is based on the uh, uh, folder name Blinky, so we would have to make it anyway new. So then we start Visual Studio and there we going under our NIF Connect extension. The welcome menu, we can there click add an existing application and just choose our my blink example. So after this you seeing here my blink example, the blue one is always a selected application. Then uh, we have to create our build configuration. Just click on it, choose your board, so our developer board, and just on build configuration. When the building process is finished, we just click on my link example, the source file, applications, the main.c file, and um, we will remove here the most parts. Uh, so we just let the main here and the while loop. In the while loop we also just let the sleep timer. You see um, that here is a sleep function which is similar to the delay function except for safe here. It's uh, uh, safe here work with thread and our application here is also a thread. Um, our own thread. So um, then for sleeping we're using KM sleep and just let it for one second sleep and this time other threads uh, from Safia uh, are running. And uh, the first thing what we want to do is just to print something and uh, we see here how easy it is. There is a function which is called print K and there we just print uh, um, text and we have also to include the file, the header file for this function. The rest we just let inside the include files, but the device tree and so on we don't need at the moment, so the safety header would be enough. And then we're going to the uh, uh, build. We can click here directly build for compiling this, um, but this process will be also done when we're clicking on flash. So the building process is finished and just click on flash and, and transfer it to your developer board. Afterwards it's always a question where this is uh, printed and the default configuration is to the um, UART port uh, zero here and um, with Visual Studio we can directly connect to a virtual port. Um, you see here our developer kit and we have here the COM port 4 at my Windows operation system. I just connected here and uh, the baud rate is 115,200 
just click and you're seeing here hello world yeah so this is quite easy this is the one with program already with microcontroller norm no know normally how complicated it is to print something out especially this print function is similar to uh, to the print f function and we can also print here um, easier number it's the same format yeah um, we just uh, making percent d for example and giving here one number for integer number and compiles this again flashes this again transferred and you're seeing that we add a number here yeah. uh, a new line would be with slash n said it's looking a little bit better <coughs> so this is quite convenient since we can this is already quite easy to debug something yeah? so now the question is how to program the LEDs um, there are different ways to do this. Uh, the one which program already with the NIF Connect. The NIF, SDK, NIF 5 SDK before knows there are libraries which you can use and they are also available here. Um, and it's quite easy. Just include this library all NIF GPIO and then we can directly set the LED one and a F GP GPIO pin uh, set yeah output We have to set first the pin, the GPIO pin as output, uh, and the number, uh, the one pin. So we define this as macro, so it's a little bit. Pin. So, and we have here the pin number, GPIO, 13 on port. Zero. This is where the LED one is connected. Yeah? So we set this as output and then just have to use the function NIF GPIO pin. I use the tackle function, so it's uh, the easiest. Give the pin number again. Print I delete I don't exist this at the moment. Just compile and so now the LED one should also blink in every one second. So you see here that the LED is blinking. Um, you are we using the library here from uh, NIF. Uh, from Nordic, uh, this is not the preferred way in Safia. Safia has its own structure, but uh, for the beginning, it's uh, at least uh, to understand how we can use the libraries from the NIF uh, SDK before. Yeah, but the question is now how we program this uh, example here in Safia without using the uh, dependence, uh, hardware dependent library from Nordic. Um, Safe here using for this something which is called device tree. There also hardware is defined. We find the overlay device tree in our example, uh, my blink example, and here you're seeing in input files the file NRF52840 uh, with the file ending DTS. <coughs> here is a lot of hardware defined uh, it's an overlay file so uh, there is the basis um, uh, device tree from the NIF 52 or 840 it's already here when we're clicking here we can also open this and then it's going deeper 
again find all the parameters. But for us, the overlay file here is uh, first important. And when we're looking here, we're finding the GPIOs. We have here GPIO zeros, this is import zero, and GPIO one. And their status is set to OK, so we can use them. We could also disable them when we don't need this hardware for saving resources. Yeah. Um, when we're clicking here, we're seeing all the parameters uh, which are set for this file. And we're seeing here is the label name, label GPIO zero. Um, we need this for getting sent the parameter from the GPIO zero. So yeah, and the programming is actually quite simple. First, um, we uh, don't um, use the macro which we had here before. We just needing the pin number because we're going to <coughs> GPIO port zero directly. So GPIO zero LED one. And this have the number 13 still. Yeah, and again, we are, first, what we always need is something uh, which is called device. This is a variable structure <coughs> to access the parameter. So, struct, struct. No, this was not what I wanted, so construct. And uh, device, and then we just call it GPIO zero device. And using the function device, get binding. And here we're using the name from the label GPIO. zero for getting the device. And then we have similar to set uh, this as output, but we are using now JPA uh, parameter uh, as function. So pin configure and the GPIO device, GPIO zero device, send the pin number, zero, zero LED, and we define it as output. So, after this is done, we can also just toggle the LED, so we're using the function GPIO pin toggle. Of course, we have here also a set and a clear par um, set par function, but with toggle it's a little bit easier. We only need one for let it, the LED blinking, giving also again the device, That's the pin number, and just let it talk as so this function we don't need anymore, and we compile it and flash it to our microcontroller. You see here also that our LED is blinking now, yeah, every second. Um, our LEDs on the developer board are connected uh, to the NIF chip that they are going off when uh, the GPIO port is set to one, uh, so to high and on when we are setting it to low. Yeah, we didn't see this here now because we use the toggle function when I use the set function and uh, I make it to zero, then the LED going on and when I setting it to one, it's going off. Yeah, we will see this when I'm making it two milliseconds uh, time, yeah, it's off. Yeah, 
uh, seeing now one second on and two second off. <coughs> the device tree here is much more powerful from safety as there is also defined the LEDs. Yeah? There is an also the flag set. So we are seeing here is a root node, then the road, uh, node LEDs and there we are having four subnodes or so child nodes LED0 to LED3. Yes, the labels are a little bit different, like on the board, so LED 0 on the board is here the LED, uh, as the LED 1 and the board is here the LED 0. We are seeing here GPROs, so parameter, we are seeing it's port 0 and uh, pin 13 and GPIO is active low. <coughs> and uh, how we program this now in SAFE here, uh, we can use their macro, safe here working a lot with macro. Uh, so we having here some LED node. Um, there is a macro DT node label, then we're getting the name of the node from LED0 internal. The uh, node name is represented as DTN for a device tree node. Then the S is for a string apostrophe, so it's signing a string um, since we cannot use it uh, here internal. And then we're having the child node LED0. Uh, so this is the internal node label. And uh, how we get the GPI port number, we're having here another micro, macro uh, DT GPIO label, I'm giving the node name and um, the parameter which we want to get GPIOs. And um, the pin number we are also getting on the same way with the macro DT GPIO pin. And then we're having also for the flag, we're getting DP, DT GPIO flags, we're getting then the flag which we have to set. So we can adapt this a little bit at our source code so we don't uh, set the GPIO part manually, we're using the macro. So pin number I exchange here. <coughs> and here I make an uh, or a combination with the flag uh, when we're setting the GPIO output and uh, then I compile it. And now it should be uh, the opposite here, so the LED is one second off and um, two second on. Yeah, of course, having then a lot of macro and there is a NASA solution uh, which we can use here, which is a NASA structure. So, uh, I make here also a copy as a node label we have. So we're using here the structure for the specification, so device tree specification. And then we're having here something like this. So um, it's holding also parameters, the DT, the device tree specification from the LED zero node. And um, afterwards, we don't have to set the whole, oops, the whole parameter. We make the configuration with another function. Um, actually, it's the same function just with uh, DT at the end for the device tree specification. Um, we're setting it then only as output, so it's quite similar, but we don't have to set the flag since this is stored in the LED0 specification. And uh, setting and uh, deleting is similar. We're having here is the DT function instead. Uh, yeah, also, and of course, uh, uh, we have to use the uh, spec here. It's the LED zero spec, and we don't need the pin number anymore because it's also in this LED zero specification. So we can flash this <coughs> also to our device. Mm -hmm. I have an error here. Which function? Ah, I think. 
have to use point as use this so So and we're seeing here we have the same result, two seconds on and one second off. Actually we could also delete this, we don't need this anymore, so it's even looking more simpler. Uh, we're having um, not only LEDs, we're having also buttons here defined in the device tree, so in a similar way we can uh, use a button. Yeah, so I define button zero zero the name is also similar in the device tree <coughs> so you see here buttons and button zero and uh, we can also define a structure Zero. I define this this time global so um, as addition we need a variable a data structure for the button as a callback container. So static uh, struct GPIO callback. So it's the structure for a GPIO callback uh, when we are defining an interrupt zero. And of course we need a function what should happen when the button is pressed. I think I copy this better because the head of the function is a little bit uh, longer. So you see here button pressed callback. Uh, we are having here again a device and the callback structure and uh, the ports. <clears throat> and what we are doing here is just to toggle our LED which is defined there. And on the similar way we configure the button, but not as output, we configure it as input. And now we have to uh, configure as an interrupt, what should happen, and uh, we want the trans, uh, rising edge on the button that there's a callback when we are called. <coughs> then we have to initialize, uh, initialize the callback function. GPRO init callback, we are having here our button callback structure, <coughs> the function which we want to call, and also the pin number where the button is connected. Uh, we are having here uh, to using the bit macro for getting the pin number. <coughs> mm. Last but not least, we have to add this GPIO uh, interrupt. GPIO. Add callback button zero spec and then we needing here support and a second parameter as a callback structure button callback. So, yeah, now it's actually finished. This part we can here delete. Uh, just let's leave function in the while. Uh, 
So we compile this. And when we're looking now on our board, you see here, I can press, press the button and the LED goes on and off. So you see, it's quite comfortable to having a device tree like this, and the source code is not so complicated if you are used to it. And uh, later, we will see then also how you can define in the device tree something like a sensor and so on, and using it through the device tree. So, this was it for this video. Uh, if you like it, push the like button. And uh, see you the next time.